Yep, you can start. Hello, friends, and a very warm welcome on behalf of Anhat, One Billion Rising India, and Satark Nagrik Sangatan to the screening of the documentary Kamla Kakunba and to celebrate our dearest Kamla. Kamla Bhaseen was a force of nature, full of energy, vibrant, unstoppable, and unforgettable. She meant different things to different people. For some of us, she was a dear, dear friend. For some, a mentor. For others, they knew her as a trailblazer, a feminist. But for all of us, she was special. And we are very grateful to Shabnam Hashmi, Gohar Raza, and everyone at Anhad for putting together this film on Kamla. It's called Kamla's Kunba, which basically is Kamla's family, which was really spread across the globe. Today also we have friends who have been very closely associated with Kamla from different continents, different countries. We have people from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, the United States, and of course, all across India who've joined us today. We have uh, Deepa Kalra, we have Chotu, who have also joined us. We can see them. And uh, it's, it's really a very, very uh, touching, significant, wonderful time and we thought that we would celebrate Kamla and her life. Without further ado, I'm going to request Amrita to play a video message from Abha Bhaiya. Uh, Abha was to join us today due to some technical and other reasons. Unfortunately, uh, she, was, she, has, she had some problem, but she sent her message. She's been a childhood friend of Kamla's. They've grown together, they work together, they've been co-travelers in their feminist journey. And Abha is the coordinator of OBR India. So we'll start with uh, the message from Abha. A feminist salam to all of you. On behalf of Anhat, OBR India, and Satak Nagrik Sangathan, I welcome all of you to this special event that we have organized. My special thanks to Shabnam for organizing it and also to Anjali for agreeing to moderate it. Now, talking about Kamla's life is like dipping into a deep sea. She's larger than life and has become a very strong milestone, a feminist milestone of the women's movement, not only in India, but in South Asia and even globally. We all know that she's special. She is, she is in many, many different ways. She is remembered especially for two very special gifts that she has given to the women's movement. One is her music, her capacity to actually write profusely, and she has done more than 80, 90 songs using a local folk songs and changing those words, really trans, kind of taking, transforming them into feminist music and making it so easy that everybody, from grassroots to academics to people on the street, they have been singing, they have all been singing her songs. The other very special gift of Kamla is really giving humor, a sense of fun, to the women's movement, you know, because we are all very often told and know that we become very serious about issues because we are fighting against such a large canvas of things that we want to change, we do not want to accept, the humiliation, the violation, the discrimination, tell us, we all know what it is all about. So Kamla gave us this very strongly and most of us most strongly have read and enjoyed her book on feminist jokes. And she was a very good also joke teller. 
So he would wait for everybody to kind of laugh and he would be interested in just going on and on with it. Kamala has an amazing skill of simplifying very difficult concepts. Uh, she was uh, criticized by academics for oversimplifying, but appreciated by the grassroots uh, activists, trainers, for giving them a chance to understand extremely difficult concepts. She has also done an amazing amount of writing. She has done songs, she has done slogans, and also a number of books, very basic concepts on gender, feminism, masculinity. She, she just kept picking up issue and trying to really explain in very simple languages. And those books have been translated in multiple languages all over the world in some ways. I have seen Turkish translation, I've seen uh, translation in some of the African languages, translation in Bangla, in Urdu, just name it. She was also an excellent trainer. She really made training a fun event and enjoyed the participation of all the people who came and made them really a very, very important participant so that she could continue working with them over a long period of time. We both, along with many other feminist friends from various parts of the countries and also in some ways world, created two very strong institutions. One is Jagori Delhi, uh, started in 1983, and also Jagori Rural, started in 2003. Kamala is not an institution builder, but she's an amazing supporter. So we complemented each other. I am really a kind of an institution builder, known like that. And Kamala built people's minds, she changed people's minds. She actually entered people's minds and tried to explain things in a manner that everybody could understand and feel that they have comprehended something very difficult. We have been complimentary. She's a public persona. I lived in silent, shadowy zones. It has been a 60-year-long journey with its ups and downs, as true of many friendships. In the end, I want to emphasize that Kamla's Kunba, the film that you're going to watch, actually has another dimension. While she played a significant role in building and bonding her siblings and her other relatives, she has created an amazingly expanded social family, a family of choice of feminists all over the world. Uh, we have felt that so many homes belong to us and our homes belong to others. This, I think, is a special gift of the feminist movement, and Kamala has been really a pioneer in that. The other important thing that I want to share is that Kamala crossed borders. She is again a pioneer in crossing borders and creating a South Asian network with all of us that is Sangat. She dreamt of erasing borders. She didn't believe that these borders needed to exist especially in South Asia. These are patriarchal male dreams that were built, and I think we need to smash them, we need to erase them, however long that takes for us or the next generation of feminists. V has been a very central friend, a person who has bonded us together further as she began a call to start One Billion Rising. And One Billion Rising, as she, she called us, I remember the morning when she gave a call and we had a, a Skype call with each other where she discussed what was kind of emerged in her mind as an extremely important global movement to eliminate violence against girls and women. And as all of you know, that was in 2012. And since 2013, all three of us, she at the, at the global level, Kamala at the South Asian level, and I work at India level. And with many, many others, nearly 40, 50 global coordinators, we continue to rise, we continue to shift our focus and make it more and more inclusive. This year is protecting women's bodies and the body of the earth. So Zindabad friends, thanks a lot, and I hope you enjoy the film.
Thank you, Abha. And I think Abha has known Kamla for so long. I think most of their lives, they've known each other. And um, their, their work together, their journey together, we've heard many times uh, about. And um, I think what Abha said, that Kamla really stood for love, for equality, for justice, for harmony. Her music, her writings, they transcended borders. They transcended genders, borders. Her feminist slogans, they touched people at the deepest level. Uh, even in the last few years when the country was, uh, has been going through some very, very significant challenges, including the anti-CA protest. Uh, Kamla wrote the most fabulous, the most powerful slogans for the women's groups that participated in those protests. She connected with people. She had a way in which she entered people's minds because she actually sort of, you know, had that, that skill, that power, and that belief that she could bring about that change in thinking, in mindsets. And I think we needed, we, we are missing Kamla today because someone like her is so needed in today's world. When we see hate being spewed, where we see othering happening all the time, we needed uh, the patriarchy smashing Kamla the most. And we miss Kamla, but she lives on in spirit and continues to guide all of us in whatever we do. I'm now going to request Shabnam to please unmute yourself, Shabnam, and uh, speak to us. Shabnam is the force behind the film that we are going to be screening, a very close friend, associate of Kamla's, and she herself has been carrying forward the work and the fight against injustice wherever she finds it. The feminist, so Shabnam, over to you. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, on behalf of Anhad, OBR India, and Satark Nagrik Sangathan, I welcome all of you to uh, today's program. Uh, in the morning, I was thinking that, you know, what was the reason that Kamla asked me to make this film? And uh, despite thinking about it for a long time, I could not find the correct reason. Uh, it was 12th of July that I got a message from Kamla that she needed to talk to me urgently about something and that I should keep myself free. And she called me, I think it was um, around 11.30 at night. She, knows, she knew it very well that I sleep very late. She called and then it was for over an hour that she was talking. And I think it was everything uh, on this earth that she discussed. But uh, in her very own style, which I will have to say in Hindi, she said, Tujhe ek film banani hai, aur iske liye ek paisa nahi dungi tujko which basically mean you have to make a film and I'm not going to give a penny uh, for that. So I said, Kamla, I mean, nobody's asking you for any, any money. You let me know what you want me to do. So she wanted uh, me to come to her house on uh, a certain day when she had planned to invite about 15, 20 friends, shoot some of that, shoot some other things and do a small film. So I told her that, you know, I'm not a filmmaker. I do not know even the ABCD of filmmaking. So I'll talk to Gohar, uh, my partner, my husband, and who does make films and who has in fact made this film also. So I said, I'll talk to her and then we will definitely come and meet you and discuss this with you. Uh, on 18th, she asked us to come two hours before the program and she said, you first record my interview, 
which was not recorded on that day. Uh, but we recorded some of what was happening uh, in uh, on that evening. Next day, she called us again at 4 p.m. And uh, then she went off to sleep, got up around 7, and from 7 till 3 in the morning, Kamla didn't want us to leave. Uh, we recorded some amount of what she wanted, but uh, it was more of just wanting to speak about so many issues. Uh, and, you know, I have never been formally part of the feminist movement. I have crisscrossed the paths many times, but I have never been. Apart from, you know, one time that we uh, formally, Eve Ensler, that she had dragged me into V-Day. It was 1999 when I met this woman, very, you know, very fascinating woman called Sally Fisher. I don't know how she found me, but uh, she found me and then she told me about V-Day and that it was beginning. And then later I met Eve and uh, I somehow landed up to become the South Asian coordinator for V-Day. Then of course, uh, Gujarat happened and I got too busy with other things. Uh, but uh, formally, I have never been part of this, you know, uh, women's movement in India. I have been a social activist. So it kept intriguing me that, you know, there are so many other people. But uh, I think the only reason why Kamla wanted me or us to make this film was that she said that look, I'm a rich woman and I am going to leave quite a lot of money and none of it is going to any of the relatives. I'm going to leave enough amount for my son and his well-being and the rest is going for the women's movement and other movements. And you have to bear testimony to the fact when one, once I am not there. And I think one thing that she had confidence in me was that, uh, that I would, you know, be always there to say what she shared with me. We have tried to incorporate that in the film. It was not easy to do this film because uh, both that, both Gohar and I were in, uh, at that time very busy with our Reimagining India video lecture series. And uh, there was not much uh, of uh, footage and other things that one would have wanted, uh, you know, to be incorporated. But it has been made with a lot of love. And I hope that uh, all of you would like it. There is no copyright after this film is screened. Anyone who wants it, we can send it, we transfer it, use it as much as you can. And, um, and I mean, I think it will help us keep remembering Kamla and the personality that she was. I can't claim to be her closest friends, but I knew her well. And uh, it was, I think, on um, 15th or 16th of September that I showed her the first cut of this film. And she wanted a few more things incorporated. She said, I want English subtitling because I want an international uh, audience to see the film. And on 23rd September, I messaged her that the film is almost ready and you know we can fix a time for the screening. But uh, she never replied. Uh, two days after that, she left us and left this huge void, which I don't think can ever be filled. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shabnam. And it is a void which is impossible to fill. But I think through the film, through uh, all her body of work, her writings, her songs, her slogans, Kamla continues to live on. And um, we are very grateful that this film has come out and we'll be watching it in some time. But before that, I'm going to invite V, formerly known as Eve Ensler. She's a longtime friend, associate, co-traveler of Kamla's. And 
all of us who knew Kamla knew how fond she was of Eve and how deeply she admired we. Um, we all know we globally, she's one of the most distinguished voices against violence, abuse against women. In 2012, uh, she created the One Billion Rising, a global campaign to end violence and promote justice and gender equality. So Eve, over to you. Thank you so much and good morning, good evening to everyone here. I'm so honored and happy to be part of this gathering. I knew Kamla almost 20 years. She was my sister, my friend, my co-conspirator. She was and continues to be inseparable from a network, a rising collective of sisters. For so many years, I couldn't say Kamla without Abba. It was Kamla and Abba, Abba and Kamla. But that network is Aruna and Kushi and Shabnam and Monique. She always had, for good reason, ambivalent feelings for Americans. So I felt honored that she trusted me and traveled with me for so long and so far. I miss her terribly. I honor her deeply. So who she was, she was a teacher, she was a preacher, she was a mystic cheerleader, she was unstoppable, she was a catalyst, she was a firecracker, she was a rabble rouser, she was a poet, a chanter, a mother, a caretaker, a gardener, a translator, a transmitter, a lover of the people, a lover of women, mighty, feminist, organizer, writer, social scientist, feisty, friend, most alive in the streets, most true in the circle. She was a living call and response. Her gifts, she was able to use simple catchy language, slogans and chants to communicate very complicated ideas to all people. She was able to transmit her belief in an emerging human consciousness through language and through her heart and the vibration of her body. She brought groups together across borders and boundaries and time. She defied walls. She fought capitalism. She spread one billion rising throughout South Asia. She devoted herself entirely to that cause. She moved mountains. She inspired youth. She served and she cherished artists. Some of our secret mad moments together, I remember the last time I was in Delhi during the horrible pollution cloud. And at the time I was still smoking and we used to sneak away and we would have our joy of our little smoke together. And that time we were smoking it in the middle of that huge pollution cloud. And even our choking didn't um, overwhelm the joy of that smoke together. Another thing I remember is sitting with her naked in a hot bath in Taiwan and just talking and laughing. The places I danced with her around the world, Delhi, Taiwan, Croatia, Dhaka, New York, Lahore, Rome, Jaipur, Mumbai, Himachal Pradesh, and almost Nepal. And I promise one day I will get there. The things that she said that mattered, I am not a wall that divides, I am a crack in that wall. So all these walls of nationality, Bangladeshi, Pakistani, Indian, we become cracks in these walls and we grow across borders and make friends. Pakistani women were the first to apologize for the genocide here in Bangladesh. Without justice and equality, it is difficult to have genuine togetherness. Unity among different people is possible only when there is justice mutual understanding and respect. When I'm raped, people say I've lost my honor. How did I lose my honor? My honor is not in my vagina. It is a patriarch patriarchal idea that my rape will defile the honor of my community. I'd like to tell everyone, why did you place your community's honor in a woman's vagina? We never did that. It is the rapist who loses his honor. We don't. I would say I'm an eco-feminist, a socialist feminist, I see the links between rape of women and rape of mother nature. I see links between all forms of oppression, class, caste, and race. Feminism will keep changing because patriarchy is constantly changing, constantly renewing itself, coming newer phases. 
Feminism is like water, it's everywhere, but it takes the shape of the container into which it's poured. But in order to succeed, feminism has to be a global movement because patriarchy is global, capitalism is global, racism is global. So we need to be fighting them all together on all fronts. It's the power of love, not the love of power. It's the power of love, not the love of power. And one of the last things Kamala said to me when we were talking about trying to find her doctors or hospitals, she wrote me this very simple thing. She said, medicines, doctors alone have never cured me. It is love. What she did for the multitudes, she inspired, she mentored, she provoked, she evoked, she got inside people, she organized, she built networks. She continued on in the face of impossible loss of her daughter and adversity. She alchemized her pain in the service of the many. She refused to leave her, lose her spark in the face of ongoing depression and oppression. And she always chose love. I don't really know how we'd go on without Kamla. She was a column. I think when we lose someone who was so essential to our movement, so essential to our lives, um, you know, feminists and feminists who give their life so wholly to the co cause are rare. They're a rare species. And I feel like um, some days I just can't even imagine what this world will be like her. But I wanted to do something this morning, if you'll all join me, because I will never forget one of the last times I was with her at the Miranda house, hundreds of young women and some men, and Kamala did this poem in full force and the mightiness of her voice and the love of her voice filled that hall with those girls and I will never ever forget it. So I thought today we could all unmute if you would and we could do um, Azadi together. I'll say the call and you'll say the response and we could do this so that we send this out to Kamla so that she might hear us so that she might feel our love, so that she might know she lives so deeply in all our hearts. Are we ready? Yes. Show, yes. show. Okay. From patriarchy, Azadi, 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 Thank you, thank you, V. Despite the challenges of technology and and all of us trying to unmute and chime into the Azadi slogan. I think everybody felt Kamla's Azadi slogan and the call. And like you said, she inspired, she loved, she moved mountains. And uh, it was the power of love. She always chose love. And it's really something which we need today globally and in the country in where we are, where there are so many divisive forces at work, 
there is patriarchy, there is um, communalism, we consistently are being pushed towards hate um, and people like Kamla really, really taught us how to love. And we miss her today, but we also celebrate everything that she stood for and everything that she did. And Kamla was part of all our progressive movements. I still remember as part of the Right to Information movement, uh, we'd done a um, convention and Kamla was there and she sat, she sat ed through every session and she summed up things so beautifully, the slogans that she brought she touched everybody at the deepest level. So um, thank you very much v, for, for sharing your time with uh, the time that you spent with Kamla, talking about her, bringing her to life for us from your lens and your point of view. And like I said, all of us who knew Kamla knew how dear uh, you were to her and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we are now going to uh, watch the film Kamla Kapunba and after that we'll talk to more friends and, and celebrate our forever friend some more. So Amrita, can we please watch the film now? ये अहम नहीं है कि जिंदगी में कितने लम्हे हैं अहम इम्पोर्टेंट ये है कि हर लम्हे में कितनी जिंदगी है कुछ लोग पैदा होते ही अजीब हो जाते हैं या पैदा ही अजीब होते हैं और उन्हें ये दुनिया ये समाज ये रिश्ते ये परंपराएं ये सामाजिक बंधन अजीब लगने लगते हैं ऐसे लोगों की जिंदगी का सफर बड़ा अजीब होता है जिंदगी भर वो समाज को और समाजी रिश्तों को ठोक पीट कर ठीक करने में लगे रहते हैं जिंदगी लगा देते हैं इस ठोका पीटी में और खुद भी उसी बदलाव में ढलते जाते हैं जिसका ख्वाब उनकी राहों में रोशनी बिखेरता रहता है ऐसे लोगों को जिंदगी के हर रंग से बेपनाह इश्क होता है हम सब की दोस्त कमला भसीन भी उन्हीं लोगों में से हैं जिनके लिए मीर तकी मीर ने कहा था सुनते हैं इश्क नाम के गुजरे हैं एक बुजुर्ग हम लोग भी फकीर उसी सिलसिले के हैं कमला ने छह भाई बहनों के बड़े कुंबे में 24 अप्रैल उन्नीस के दिन चौथे नंबर पर डॉक्टर एम भसीन साहेब यानी पिताई और श्रीमती सुकन्या यानी माताई के घर पैदा होने का फैसला किया जहाँ तक मेरी पैदाइश का ताल्लुक है 1946 24 अप्रैल को ही और मेरी किस्मत से आज जो पा, पंजाब पाकिस्तान में है वहाँ हुई किस्मत से इसलिए कह रही हूँ कि इसने शायद मेरी जिंदगी के बहुत से डिसीशंस तय किए वहाँ मेरी पैदाइश इसलिए हुई कि अम्मी मेरी माताजी मेरी बुआ जी के फुफ्फी के शादी पे गई थी पहले तीन चार महीने के लिए जाते थे तो मुझे अंदर ले गई थी वहाँ पे उस गाँवड़े में 24 अप्रैल को मैं पैदा हो गई उस गांव में शायद वो दाई थी उसने पैदा कर दिया गांव के रीति रिवाज जात पात के बंधन जो बचपन से ही लड़कियों पर लगाम कसने की कोशिश में लग जाते हैं कभी कमला के परों को नहीं कतर सके उसे गुड़ियों से खेलने का कोई शौक नहीं था 
गिल्ली डंडा लपक डंडी कंचे और पेड़ों पर चढ़कर कूदना उसके लिए खेल नहीं आदत बन गई और गांव के माहौल में साइकिल स्कूल में वॉलीबॉल तो चलो ठीक था पर कॉलेज पहुंचकर पिताई के लिए मोटरसाइकिल खरीदना और उसे खुद चलाकर लाना कौन सोच सकता था उस जमाने में अपनी किसी दोस्त के भाई के साथ छोटे भाई के साथ चला के और खुद जयपुर से जावा मोटरसाइकिल लेके आ गई मेरे वालिद के लिए और ये कमला जी मोटरसाइकिल चला और गाँव के अंदर छोरी मोटर छोट छोरी मोटरसाइकिल चला हुआ है अरे छोरी मोटरसाइकिल चला हुआ मेरे मेरे वालिद भी इनसे डरते थे बिकॉज ये अपने उसूलों की पक्की थी सही कहती थी कट के कहती थी सब चीज़ें मतलब जो जो कहना है किसी से खौफ नहीं था तो सभी डरते भी थे लिहाज भी करते थे भाई इनके सामने ये ना बोला जाए हिंदुस्तान के गाँव की मिट्टी में गुंधी कमला जब तालीम हासिल करने शहर पहुंची तब तक गांव की औरतों का दर्द उनकी शख्सियत का हिस्सा बन चुका था धीरे धीरे समाज के सबसे ज्यादा दबे कुचले हिस्से की हालत सुधारने की लगन हमेशा साथ थी साथ ही साथ जिंदगी को भरपूर जीने की चाह बदतरीन हालात में भी मुस्कुराहटों के फूल खिलाना और कुंबे की छोटी से छोटी जिम्मेदारियों को पूरा करने की लगन कमला की जिंदगी को ढाल रहे थे घर को भी इन्होंने आबाद किया घर को भी सजाया संवारा भाई बहनों के लिए जितना कर सकती थी किया तो वो शुरू से ही इनकी नेचर थी सबके लिए करने की तो वही मेरे ख्याल से तरबियत जो इन्हें मिली आगे चल के सोशल सर्विस गाँवों का उत्थान गरीबों के लिए काम करना और वो सब मेरे ख्याल से वहीं से तो हम भी वी यूज टू रियली आइडियलाइज हर एंड रियली प्राउड ऑफ पर्सन लाइक हर इन आर लाइफ जिस तरीके से धरती माता हमारी माता होती है और उस धरती से हमें सब कुछ मिलता है उसी तरीके से ये मेरी माँ के बदले दूसरी माँ खड़ी हो गई राजस्थान यूनिवर्सिटी में एम ए की पढ़ाई पूरी हुई ही थी कि इस गांव की लड़की की जिंदगी में एक बड़ा मोड़ आया वेस्ट जर्मनी की यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ म्यूनस्टर में सोशोलॉजी ऑफ डेवलपमेंट की तालीम के लिए फेलोशिप मिल गई वहाँ पढ़ाई पूरी हुई तो ओरिएंटेशन सेंटर ऑफ जर्मन फाउंडेशन फॉर डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज में पढ़ाने का सिलसिला शुरू हुआ जो एक साल तक चला जर्मनी के सफर ने कमला के लिए सारी दुनिया के रास्ते खोल दिए मगर कमला को तो देश के भयानक हालात वापस बुला रहे थे जो वहाँ सीखा था उसका इस्तेमाल देश के हालात सुधारने के लिए करना था हिंदुस्तान लौटकर सेवा मंदिर में काम शुरू किया तो समाज का वो चेहरा सामने आया जो सातों में झगड़ा हुआ था छूट छात की इस चक्की में पिसती हुई औरतों ने कमला के फेमिनिज्म में यकीन को और मजबूत कर दिया and it is an ocean of love which is about feminist love so in that sense she has taught us all our lessons for feminist solidarity and it doesn't stop with me it goes to all the young people and all the old people so she becomes like a circle for all of us pata nahi kamla ne united nations ko dhoonda ya united nations ne kamla ko magar food and agriculture organization mein pahunchte hi कमला का कुंबा पूरे साउथ एशिया में फैल गया धरती के इस इलाके में बसने वाले अब उसके अपने थे उनका दर्द कमला के दिल की धड़कन था जंगों के खून खराबे ने कमला को जंग ही नहीं नफरत और हिंसा के हर पहलू से नफरत करना सिखा दिया पर वो हाथों पर हाथ धरकर बैठने वालों में से नहीं थी कमला को एक नए आजाद देश की बदहाली बुला रही थी वो बांग्लादेश जा पहुंची जहां जफरुल्ला चौधरी की शख्सियत ने कमला की सोच पर गहरा असर डाला पर कमला को तो आखिर लौटकर हिंदुस्तान आना ही था यूएन की लाखों रुपए की नौकरी छोड़ी और संगत की बुनियाद डाली सत्ताईस साल यूएन में रह के काम किया फिर वहां से रिजाइन किया 
और फिर अब पिछले पंद्रह साल से मैं वही काम एन के माध्यम से करती हूं दोस्तों जब से मैं दिल्ली आई 79 में तब से मैं विमेंस मूवमेंट का हिस्सा हूं ह्यूमन राइट्स मूवमेंट का छोटा सा एक हिस्सा हूं सेक्युलर मूवमेंट का मैं छोटा सा हिस्सा हूं कमला का सरमायादाराना निजाम के खिलाफ उठना लाजमी था जिस समाज में औरत एक वस्तु एक कमोडिटी बना दी जाए कमला उसे बर्दाश्त कर ही नहीं सकती थी पर यह लड़ाई किसी एक सरहद पर लड़कर नहीं जीती जा सकती थी और इसलिए संगत एक ऐसी लेबोरेटरी थी जो हजारों मर्दों और औरतों के जहनों को बदलने में जुट गई कमला और संगत के दूसरे साथियों को एहसास था कि बिना जेंडर पॉवर्टी सोशल जस्टिस सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट पीस डेमोक्रेसी एंड ह्यूमन राइट्स जैसे मुद्दों से जूझे बिना दुनिया की आधी आबादी यानी महिलाओं की हालत में सुधार लाना नामुमकिन है ऐसे लोग जिन्होंने सारा फेमिनिस्ट मूवमेंट बना के खड़ा किया और मोहब्बत का जो सच्चा पूरा रूप होता है मोहब्बत की सारी कहानी जो है और मोहब्बत से कैसे दुनिया बनती है और हम लोग जो एक नारीवादी दुनिया की बात करते थे ना हमारी अपनी दुनिया जो खून के रिश्ते हो ना हो कोई रिश्तेदारी हो ना हो लेकिन एक अपनी दुनिया वो एक दुनिया बनाने का जो पूरा हुनर सीखा वो हमने हमारी हम शेरा कमला जी से सीखा कमला के कभी ना रुकने वाले कदमों ने संगत की जिम्मेदारियों को संभालते हुए दो और बड़ी संस्थाओं की बुनियाद डालने में बड़ा अहम रोल अदा किया जिसमें एक है विपसा विमेंस इनिशिएटिव फॉर पीस इन साउथ एशिया जिसने उन महिलाओं को एकजुट किया जिन्हें मुल्कों की जंगों ने बेघर बेदर कर दिया था यह संस्था जंग के खिलाफ एक अहम आवाज बनकर उभरी और दूसरी थी थाउजेंड पीस विमेन इस संस्था ने सारी दुनिया की जुझारू महिलाओं को सिर्फ एक जुट ही नहीं किया बल्कि उन्हें पीस नोबेल प्राइज के लिए भी नॉमिनेट किया गया और इस संघर्ष को गलियों चौबारों से लेकर इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंसेस तक जारी रखना जरूरी था कमला ने कलम भी उठाया सिर्फ मोटी मोटी किताबें लिखने के लिए नहीं बल्कि गाने लिखे नारे लिखे पैम्फ्रिट लिखे बच्चों की सोच ढालने के लिए कहानियां लिखी we work with public transport drivers and she has created those slogans uh, mera iman mahilaon ka samman ye sare slogans is waqt sab ki zuban pe hain aur sab aur itna simple aur itna khoobsurat hai ki usko usko explain karne ki zarurat nahi padti aur yahi kamla ji hain agar aap unka koi bhi slogan sun le to wo usme ek humor ka bhi ek element hota hai aur ek power ka bhi element hota hai like her latest one which is my personal favorite ki beti dil mein to beti will mein वो सारे गाने वो सारे नारे वो सारी सो कॉल्ड कविताएं मैंने नहीं लिखी ये मुझसे लिखवाई गई मूवमेंट की गर्माहट में मुझे आके हुक्म दिया और अपन तो भैया मूवमेंट की गर्माहट चाहे मूवमेंट कभी भर, शायद कभी ज्वाइन नहीं किया और वहां से आगे लेकिन इट डजेंट मैच आ बिल्कुल जरूरी नहीं है कि मूवमेंट में सिर्फ वही होते हैं जो सड़कों पर नारे लगाते हैं कमला का कुंबा अब सारी दुनिया में फैल चुका था जब ईव एंसलर ने वन बिलियन राइजिंग की बुनियाद डाली तो कमला ने साउथ एशिया कोऑर्डिनेटर की जिम्मेदारी संभाली बलात्कार और महिलाओं पर हिंसा के खिलाफ ये दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी मुहिम की शुरुआत थी जिसने महिलाओं को भरोसा दिलाया कि संघर्ष लंबा सही पर लड़ेंगे जीतेंगे माय होल इंट्रोडक्शन इनटू द साउथ एशियन ह्यूमन राइट्स मूवमेंट टू अ वेरी लार्ज एक्सटेंट इज एक्चुअली थ्रू कमला एंड शेयर वेरी जेनरसली शेयर फ्रेंडशिप्स विद मी डायरेक्टली आपने मुझे शायद कभी कुछ नहीं पढ़ाया लेकिन मैंने जो अपने नारीवाद के सारे सबक हैं वो कमला बहन की किताबें और उनकी स्टोरीज उनके गाने उनकी वर्कशॉप्स उनसे सीखा 
कमला के कुंबे में तो मैं ज़रूर हूँ और कमला को हम हमेशा कहते हैं कि वो तो हमारी रॉक स्टार है फेमिनिज्म इज़ अ जर्नी इट्स नॉट अ डेस्टिनेशन शी इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कम्पैशनेट पीपल दैट आई हैव नोन वन ऑफ द काइंडेस्ट इट्स अ जर्नी मैं जहाँ तक पहुँचूँगी पहुँच जाऊँगी समाज औरतों को बराबरी नहीं देना चाहता इसलिए फेमिनिज्म को किसी भी नाम से पुकारें उसका विरोध तो होना ही था महिलाओं की आज़ादी और बराबरी की ये जंग शुरुआत से ही मुश्किल थी और इस जंग के साथ कमला के घर की चार दीवारी के अंदर भी एक संघर्ष लगातार चल रहा था बेटे को वैक्सीनेशन का रिएक्शन हुआ और उसके बचने की उम्मीद नहीं रही पर कमला हार मानने वालों में से नहीं थी बेटा सात महीने का था उसको एक वैक्सीनेशन दिया जिसका रिएक्शन हो गया और उसके ब्रेन में वायरल इन्फेक्शन हो गया पहले दिल्ली के अस्पतालों में फिर लंदन के अस्पतालों में महीनों चक्कर काटे कोई फायदा नहीं हुआ उसके बाद हर माँ के जैसे मैं भी मज़ारों में गई गुरुद्वारों में गई मंदिरों में गई कि किसी तरह मेरा बेटा ठीक हो जाए नहीं हुआ ठीक बच्चा था बिल्कुल लेकिन ट्रिपल पोलियो वैक्सीन के बाद वन इन अ मिलियन को इफेक्ट होता है तो वो सेरिब्रल पॉलिसी इन्हें हुई उसके लिए काफ़ी इलाज वगैरह कराए तो रोज़ अपने बच्चे को देखना कि कब खाना हलक में उनका अटक जाएगा और कब क्या हो जाएगा बयालीस साल इसको देखते हुए और बिल्कुल कमिटमेंट से उसकी खिदमत करते हुए अब हम लोग इन्हें इन्हें हम शहनशाह कहते हैं बादशाह कहते हैं बेटी और बेटे से बेपनाह मोहब्बत को एक बड़ा धक्का तब लगा जब मीतों ने डिप्रेशन के कारण अपनी जिंदगी की डोर को तोड़ लिया मीतों के जाने ने कमला के पूरे कुंबे को हिला कर रख दिया मीतों की जुदाई के कभी न भरने वाले जख्म को लिए कमला संघर्षों के रास्ते पर थके बिना चलती रही इतनी खूबसूरत जहन की खूबसूरत शक्ल की एक खूबसूरत नेचर की बेटी जब इनकी जिंदगी में आई और बड़ी हुई सब ख्वाब उसकी तरफ थे हम सब वी वो सो फॉन्ड ऑफ एंड शी वॉज सच अ लवली पर्सन अचानक पता चलता है ऑक्सफर्ड में अपनी वो रिसर्च कर रही हैं पढ़ रही हैं शीज ए रिसर्च स्कॉलर है पता चलता है उन्होंने खुदकुशी कर ली अपनी जान दी मैं ये मानती हूँ कि अगर मेरी ज़िंदगी में कोई बड़ा मकसद ना होता अगर मेरी ज़िंदगी में ये काम और ये आग ना होती तो मैं इन तूफ़ानों से बाहर नहीं निकल पाती मेरे काम ने मुझे जिंदा रखा खास तौर से मेरी बेटी वाला जो तूफान था वो तो मतलब मैं किसी भी कॉलेज में चली जाऊं मुझे बेटी ही नजर आती है जिंदगी में अगर राह के काटों को चुनते रहना और फूलों की खुशबू बिखेरना मकसद बन जाए तो हर अकेला उठने वाला कदम काफिले में तब्दील होता चला जाता है 2012 दिसंबर कमला ब्रोक हर लेग वी वर ऑल इन काबुल अ वेरी डियर फ्रेंड ऑफ हर्स हुज अ डॉक्टर एंड हुज हजबेंड इज अ डॉक्टर शी सेट दे सेट वी विल डू इट एट होम फॉर यू एंड देर वॉज नो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो दे वर डूइंग इट इन मल्टीपल कैंडल लाइट्स एंड दे केप प्लास्टरिंग एंड दे केप प्लास्टरिंग एंड दे केप प्लास्टरिंग टिल इट वॉज दिस ह्यूज कमला के लिए क्योंकि दोस्त प्यार से कर रहे हैं उसकी हड्डी खराब हो जाएगी वो उसकी एक्चुअली शी नेवर थॉट ऑफ इट शी वॉज लाइक इफ समी इज डूइंग इट विद लव इट मस्ट बी समथिंग गुड फॉर मी एंड दैट्स रियली द लव विद विच शी हैज हेल्ड एवरी वन एंड एवरी थिंग इन हर लाइफ विच हैज सस्टेन हर एंड विच शी हैज टॉट हर फ्रेंड्स टू टेक ब्रेथ फ्रॉम कभी यहाँ लड़ाई झगड़ा तो होता ही नहीं है वो एक मस्ती है सब मिलजुल कर रहते हैं दीदी का तमाशा देखते हैं 
दीदी जो दिखाती हैं सिखाती हैं वो सब सीखते हैं हमारे मजे तो दी हर रोज हर घड़ी ही मजा आता है वैसे बोला जाए तो दीदी सब सीखे हैं बहुत कुछ हम लोग को सीखने को मिला है दीदी के साथ और कभी हमें ऐसे कोई बड़ी बात नहीं बोली इतना प्यार करते थे छोटे की वजह से छोटे की वजह से हम क्या बोले छोटे के साथ हम इतने साल तक हैं छब्बीस साल हो गए अभी हमारे को यहाँ पर काम करते हुए इनके साथ दीदी के साथ तो ये बहुत प्यार मिला जितना हम लोग के साथ ये किया है शायद हो सकता मैंने हमारे माँ बाप भी नहीं किए जो कुछ भी मैंने सीखा सब यहीं आके सीखा किसी के साथ कैसे बातें करना मतलब किसके साथ क्या करना सब मैंने कमला दीदी से ही सीखे या जब लोग कहते हैं आपने इतना काम किया लोगों के लिए मैंने कहा बकवास मत करो मैं इतनी सेल्फिश हूँ कि मैं किसी के लिए कुछ करती नहीं हूँ जो मुझे खुशी दे मेरा काम तो मैंने जब नौकरी की तब से मेरी खुशी के लिए किया कमला को कैंसर हो गया है एक रेयर कैंसर ये खबर कमला के पूरे कुंबे पर बिजली की तरह गिरी दुख और आंसू के सैलाब उमड़ने लगे पर कमला के लिए संघर्षों की राह में बस ये एक नया मोड़ था जो भी प्यार से मिला इस दिन पहली बार मुझे पता चला कि ये इतनी कैंसर है इस तरह का कैंसर है जिस तरह से मैं दहाड़ मार के रोई हूँ उनमें से बहुत सारे भै 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 करके रो रहे हैं बीस दिन पहले जब ये बताया ये मुझे संभाल रही थी इन हालात में भी ऐसा लगता था जैसे कमला को निजी और सामाजिक दोनों तरह की जिम्मेदारियों की चिंता अपनी बीमारी से कहीं ज्यादा थी मेरी फैमिली में दो तो बता दी बाबू के पेरेंट्स हैं सुजाता टोपो वो पिताजी जो सुबोध तिरकी मेरी अन्नदाता वो हैं शारदा एक्का और जो मेरी ओवरऑल मैनेजर बेल्ला एक्का ऑल आदिवासी ऑल ईसाई एंड ऑल द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल पीपल सो ऑल दिस रनिंग अराउंड All this working, मतलब I have never been at home for more than fifteen days a month. I owe everything I am. My freedom, my autonomy, my son's life. So they are more than any blood relation of mine. And now I'm telling you, कि I am a rich woman. I am sorry, but मैं हूँ. Not a penny of that will go to family because they are so well off. All of it will go for work, जिसमें मैंने गरीबों के नाम पे ये कमाया है. Poverty, UN में कर करा के, उनके नाम पे कमाया, उनको समर्थित. She is not well, but सब कुछ खुद करना चाह रही हैं. हमें पास नहीं पटकने चाहिए दे दे रही है मैं सब कर लूँगी सुबह से शाम तक मैसेजेस आ रहे हैं आई डोंट नो हाउ शी इज कोपिंग विद ऑल और जब तंग आ गई तो ये कह के क्या आपको पता लग गया है कि मैं सच में उन डॉक्टरों के जैसे आई यू कन्विंस्ड मतलब यू डिसाइडेड दैट यू नो इट कि मैं उन डॉक्टरों की कही बात पे एक साल में मर जाऊँगी अगर आप लोगों ने डिसाइड कर लिया है तो आप रो ना मैंने डिसाइड नहीं किया है मैंने यकीन नहीं किया है अभी तो मैं जवान हूँ अभी तो मैं जवान
that was so beautiful and uh, and i think for all of us here it was i don't think that there are any words to describe how one felt abhi to main jawan hu kamla has is signifies eternal youth she's always there she's um, forever young that youthful energy and with which she approached life till the very end and so much to learn from her inspired everyone in so many ways stood by lakhs of people women uh, anyone who needed her kamla was always there and and i think the message there also was that she felt equally she felt that it gave her as much joy to be with people as the joy that she gave and she spread throughout her life and uh, very grateful to anhat um for bringing this and putting this together for us and um, i still remember very vividly that that get together that meeting at kamla's uh, house when we had known for some time that she was she had cancer that she had said that she might be leaving us soon but but i think the these memories are going to stay with us forever and she's going to be forever young and forever living in spirit in thought in everything that we do because she's touched all of us so deeply um i'm now going to request vrinda vrinda grover uh vrinda is one of the strongest advocates for women's rights and human rights both inside and outside court and uh, a very dear friend uh, of kamla's and she continues to put things together as per kamla's wishes and uh, i'm going to request vinda to please unmute herself and vinda the floor is yours thank you anjali and thank you first of all to shabnam gohar the adnanyas who have made this film uh, of kamlas for all of us uh, to just uh, uh, have some uh, relive some of the moments with her each time uh, we see this film uh, and of course trust kamla to have uh, dictated that the film should be made uh, if anybody here thinks that she is uh, going to leave your mind or heart well she is not and she had made sure of that uh, i'm also very happy to see that chotu subodh and deepak kalra i can see sujata waving at us uh, they are also watching this and i think uh, kamla would have definitely wanted deepak and uh, chotu sujata subodh to all see this they are now in jaipur but they know all of us and uh, um, Uh, they can see that uh, the friends and family of kamla continues uh, to meet uh, in different ways and forms uh, very aptly uh, shabnam has named shabnam and gohar have all named this film uh, kamla ka kunba and in true uh, kamla style this kunba just keeps growing uh, deepak kalra who is with whom now uh chotu subodh sujata bela reside in jaipur is also there and it's really one more friend uh who has joined the large uh, gang of friends that uh kamla has and uh, uh that's how uh you know her her kunba has always grown because each friend meets the other and uh the friendship then grows and takes it forward i everybody has been mentioning for how long they have known uh, kamla i met kamla uh, um in the 80s when i was in undergrad in college 
and uh, ran into events uh, organized by the women's movement and of course was struck by her songs and by um, the slogans. And those songs actually, you know, one was still trying to figure out what is feminism? What is all this about? This is the early 80s I'm talking about. And her song actually provided me a very good way in which to communicate uh, my dissent within the family. Uh, and those songs were what I would, uh, uh, in, and I sing really, really badly. The women's movement uh, figured that out very early. I'm only allowed to sing in chorus on streets when it doesn't matter. There they like people like me because they want us, the voice to be loud, but it's so tone deaf that they don't want it heard. And her songs actually provided a way to start a conversation in the family when I didn't have the words to express uh, what was discrimination. Um, and then of course, my journey through the feminist movement through all its milestones has known uh, Kamla forever with the, with the friendship growing in different ways and becoming uh, uh, the age didn't matter. It was much more of a relationship where we would agree, disagree, argue, but always knew that we were always there for each other. She also had a way of collecting everybody. There were these parties she would have and Sujata and Subodh know the parties that they were, were held in her home where everybody would bring food and lots and lots of friends were invited. And the house was open and we would all uh, have a very good time, uh, except that Kamla would tell us the same jokes and she would want people like Roshmi to sing the same song. Uh, so there was, a, there was a rhythm to the party, but it would be full of uh, fun, music, uh, laughter, and of course, good food so that everybody was happy and enjoying. And at each party, one saw that there were always new friends who had joined. And that is really what I think Kamla was all about, about making sure that we met more and more friends joined this her, her, her kunba and we could take it forward from there. I will not speak much more here. There are others here. I would only mention that last week, uh, the Asma Jahangir Memorial Conference was held in Lahore. I was supposed to travel to Lahore, but of course trust the two countries together to ensure that we don't get the relevant uh, um, documents to go through. So I did join uh, the conference online. Uh, Kamla was much remembered at the Asma Jahangir Memorial Conference. And when they remembered the friends who had left us in the last year from Pakistan, Rehman Saab and Kamran, and from India, Kamla. They made a small video uh, which they shared with us where uh, there was a clipping of, there was a clip of one of the multiple speeches that Kamla has given and um, across South Asia and in Pakistan, uh, very fondly Kamla was remembered. And I think with that spirit of where she always insisted that we were South Asians. Uh, with that spirit, we will continue uh, to hold each other with love and friendship uh, together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vrinda. And uh, Kamla was never conventional in life and she had no intention to be even in death. And she chose Vrinda to leave her in charge of making sure that her vision and her wishes, even after she left us, were upheld, taken forward. And Vrinda has in her typical style and very like a true loyal friend been doing this that tirelessly and taking you know every step that she has to and she can to make sure that Chotu is in Jaipur now and things are unfolding and happening the way, exactly the way Kamla wanted. So thank you, Vrinda, and thank you for, for sharing with us memories and your thoughts about Kamla as well. Thank you. And like we, like we said, Kamla was the crack in the wall. And 
at a time when uh, in our country, we are cons constantly being reminded how our neighbors are our biggest enemies. Kamla was a true South Asian and she brought together and people and she had friends across borders and she, she just totally steadfastly stood by them and with them and those friendships we heard about. So many friends we haven't, many of us haven't met, but we know them very deeply because, and very well, we think, because we've heard of them from Kamla and who spoken of them so fondly to us in all the parties that Vrinda talked about over all the lovely food that we ate. So I'm going to now request Kushi Kabir from Bangladesh, a social activist, feminist, environmentalist, a dear, dear friend of Kamla's. And the last time we met Kushi was on Kamla's 75th birthday, which we all celebrated on Zoom. And um, the floor is yours, Kushi. Thank you. Thank you everybody for having organized this. Uh, Shabnam Gohar, this was, I mean, just uh, Kamla is with us and this film just brought her right inside me. I think it brought her right inside all of us. So she's no longer the crack. The walls disappeared where Kamla and we are concerned. She, she's a part of me. And I just feel that more and more every day as days go by. And I can see behind Vrinda, the tree of life. I mean, Kamla's, you know, she was sick, she couldn't, but she would send, suddenly she would send a text message, voice message over WhatsApp. And she would send pictures and she sent pictures of this tree of life. And uh, she had some in her house and she had some brought by her brother. So everyone's talked about what Kamla is. And I will say Kamla is because the force that is Kamla is a force that will never go away. And I think for me being a South Asian or a, a woman who has, doesn't believe in boundaries, Kamla was one of the first to start from the crack in the wall to break the wall. Our governments stop us. She wanted me to come and stay with her for 10 days, she said, and the least you can do is come and stay 10 days with me. But unfortunately, your Mr. Modi thought otherwise. He had other plans and uh, took all 14 of my passports since the first passport I ever had, checked everything. They could do a thesis PhD on me now if they wish to. But the end result was I didn't get my visa. So maybe this was to be, that Kamla will be with me as she was. I last saw her when she came in January to Dhaka for a very short visit. And when she was invited to speak at uh, here, but the main reason she came was my daughter had a very premature child. And my daughter and Kamla had a very special relationship. In fact, she thought of Kamla as a second mother and many things that she couldn't tell me, she would tell Kamla and Kamla would be the one. Like even when she was going through the trauma of, and the, of how to deal with, you know, she felt that she was inadequate, et cetera. Things that she hadn't shared with me. It's only Kamla that she would share with. So she came to see my daughter and just tell her that, uh, you know, it's, hang on, it's nothing to do with you. It just happened and you have to hold on. And now that kid is over a year and a half and running around and she is so feisty. I just wish Kamla was, she was there to see Kamla and Kamla was there to see her. I think they would both bond. 
So I was just talking about the crack in the wall. I've known Kamla since she's been coming to Bangladesh, first with the FAO and then all the different workshops she did. In fact, the first month long workshop, I helped her to organize. That was in 86. And before that, other workshops that we did in 83 with Chandra Lekha and all, and we went to different places. So uh, the first time this was in 83, she had women from Pakistan over and I still had that block inside me. And I just couldn't think that I would be spending six weeks with Pakistanis. And it was Kamla who made me break that. I, I had a meltdown, I broke, but it was uh, Kamla who made me realize that what have these women got to do with what the Pakistani army did to you or the state of Pakistan did to you? And uh, then it was Bunny who invited me to Bhitsha. And I think that was the best place to be in Bhitsha to heal and get over. I think half the people I've met and uh, here, and we have over 158 I see people. The ones I've met, I see Asha here, I see so many people I don't see regularly. And I see Subodh's over there. Yes, Subodh. Ah, Chotu, give Chotu a big love hug from me. Yes. So uh, she, I think there was something in her and inside her that just uh, touched all of us. And, uh, you know, I tease her all the time, but she would, she also had this ability, as you said, she would crack jokes, but she also had this ability in the most serious of places to break into the most silliest of jokes and get me totally cracked up and sit on the floor and do things like, here we were at Taiwan, remember me? And she would, she would make us sit on the floor. And then when she was supposed to give the keynote speech on this huge stage and the president of Taiwan was there, she made us all stand with, her, uh, with all her uh, banners and go Azadi and chant Azadi when she was speaking. I mean, she just was someone who was so sure of herself that she could go to any place anywhere and be as irreverent as ever and get away with it. I don't think that's uh, something that everybody can be able to do. She just, she just break any rules that if people wanted certain people to behave in a certain way, she'd do the opposite of that. So come and introduce me to V and Monique and all the lovely people at One Billion Rising. She gave me the stars. This was, I don't know why. This was before she had even gone to the doctor or she knew she was feeling sick. She just rang me up. Now, Kamla goes to sleep at 10 and I don't go to sleep before 2 a.m. So I don't know how, why we were such good friends because Kamla wakes up at 6 and I don't wake up before, unless I have to wake up. I only wake up when I have to wake up. So, but the, yet the two of us were just amazing together. And uh, she stringed me up and she says, I said, I'm busy now and all that. And she said, I need to talk to you, but I need to talk to you seriously. And you have to give me your full attention. So it was 10, 30 or 11 for Kamla ringing up at 11 must be a very serious matter. When uh, Shabnam, you were talking at two, three at night, this is not the Kamla. I remember Kamla sending a message at two or three and WhatsApp and I said, Kamla, are you okay? And she said, no, no, I'm okay. I went to sleep, I woke up, I can't sleep. So I just decided to send a message. So Kamla ringing me up at 11 and saying, I run Sangat for a long time. And then she went in a whole spiel of, you know, it's time that she stepped down, etc. And I wasn't prepared for what she was going to announce. 
And she said, you're taking over. And I said, why? And she said, well, I'll be there. I'm not leaving Sangat. I'm just going to be there. So I just want you to take over. First, she said her age. I said, if you, you know, she always, because she's two and a half years older than me, she always held it over me that I'm older than you. So she said, you know, I'm 75. So I said, yes, yeah, so I'm 72 and a half. So, I mean, what's the difference? But uh, anyway, so I said, just call the whole Sangat core group. And then I was landed with having to look after Sangat, which I have to, and everybody at Sangat, everybody at Sangat is there with me and all of us and Kamla is with, there with us. Kamla is driving us actually. And people who weren't taking responsibilities in their own countries are now taking on responsibility. This is what Kamla is left behind. Therefore, Kamla is there. You know, before we would think that Kamla would do it. Now we are doing it because Kamla is there. And so all of us are doing it. And I just don't want to go on. I just want to say that Kamla, your spirit, your laughter, your sense of, you know, the ridiculous, which is not something that everyone has. It's, I think it's this amazing spirit to have. Your, uh, your concern, your, uh, you are able to do, your concern for people, clarifying the most, which people have said, I've seen her, you know, she did a workshop for me in Bangla with all my colleagues, my colleagues, and bringing in concepts of patriarchy in Bangla, of intersectionality, in Bangla, Kamla could do that. I don't think everybody could do that. So Kamla, I'll just end now and say, uh, for me, Kamla is there, will be there. I think she's inside all of us. And uh, anyone who's ever met her, she entered that inside them. She entered into them. I mean, there isn't anybody who has ever met her who has not been affected by Kamla. Yes, Mira, lovely to see you. And I just miss all the hugs. I miss hugs more than anything else. This, if, if I'm angry at COVID, apart from taking away all my good friends, I'm missing all not being able to hug every one of you. So a big collective hug from the woman who taught me about the power of love. And I never had the love of power, but she's been talking about that how do you reject and the love, love of power, but she gave me the power of love. So love to all of you. Kamla, we love you, you're there, you will be there. And thank you for the film. It'll, and I just want to announce that on the 30th of November, which is South Asian Women's Day, Kamla had announced it as South Asian Women's Day. We are dedicating it for Kamla and to Kamla. And at the end, first we'll have a very short program. And then at the end, we will show the film for everybody within the whole of South Asia and all the Sangat people who've done all the trainings with her and who just, who are not, couldn't be here today, though we tried to give them the message. So just to, I will, we'll be very shortly be sending, and Sangat will be sending the link through which you can watch the film again if you wish to. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Love you, Kamla. You'll always be there. Thank you, Kushi. Thank you so much. And Kamla is truly a part of us, and she's there her spirit, we can feel her and everything that she stood for and uh, the whole South Asian network that she so successfully brought together, um, steered and, 
you know, through all the trainings that she called us to talk to, uh, to women from across South Asia, the love that we saw that every one of the participants had for her, you know, the, the bond that she was capable of creating. I've not seen that, that uh, happen with people. And, and I think, uh, like you said, she's not left us. She's very much with us and a part of us. And I'm going to move on and request Kavar Mumtaz to please speak to us. Um, we know that in India these days, the biggest taunt that the, those divisive forces that are at play can give you is go to Pakistan. And very often uh, Kamla would say, well, what is the problem with that? I would love to go to Pakistan. I mean, I love all my friends there. I've learned so much there and such deep bonds there. And um, really uh, glad that you could join us today, Kavar, um, Pakistani women's rights activist, author, uh, professor, former chairperson of the National Commission on the Status of Women. So over to you, Kavar, if you could please unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, first of all, for asking me to be here today and also for this wonderful wonderful documentary which has been so moving and so and captures uh, Kamla so beautifully, all her work, her resolve, but what has really struck me, her ability to, to be, to engage knowing that time in this world was very short. So it's been a, a very, very moving experience. Thank you, Shabnam and uh, Gohar Raza and everybody there. Uh, so much has been said so already about Kamla's that I don't would, wouldn't like to repeat it. I mean, she she was uh, an icon in a way. She connected all of us. She was she was a trainer. She was she was a humorist. She wrote uh, her books, her her jokes, her slogans, her singing. It's all so resounding, and we you know the the the, the documentary really brought it out. But what really, um, you know, we're just thinking, I, I was introduced to Kamla in 1984, I think, by Bani Negat Sayyid Khan, who was a very close friend of Kamla's. Uh, and since from that time on, there were so many occasions that we met each time I went to India. There was a time we could come to India every year and she could come to Pakistan as, as often as she could. So we would always connect somewhere along the line. And we also connected internationally at Beijing, at, um, in Nepal, when she was doing a Sangat program in, 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 in different parts of India. And the last time we met was at the uh, first Asma Jahangir conference when she came to Lahore and then to Islamabad for a billion women rising uh, event. Uh, but what really, you know, is remarkable, I, I find very remarkable is that you know, the tragedies that she went through in her life heightened her sensitivity and her ability to empathize with other women's lives as well as their tragedies across South Asia, the ordinary women's tragedies, the, uh, every ordinary woman's lives. And, and which enabled her to reach out to people to be able to understand what they were going through and also the warmth that she communicated to them. And I think that those were her, very uh, sort of golden uh, qualities. And, and also, you know, her spirit wasn't broken in spite of the tra tragedy, tragedies, her resolve, her courage, her commitment, her passion, that kept her going. And that also was very remarkable. She's been a remarkable person and most of come remarkable thing that she was facing the end of her life with so, so much resolve and and communicating and singing and taking it as it comes. I think she's a very courageous and brave woman. And that's what I really admire in what she was and her commitment, her ability to go to the core of the issue, the fact that there was no peace, the, core, the fact there was no social justice, there's no equality, the core reason is patriarchy. And she, I think, devoted her whole life to 
make people understand what patriarchy is and mobilize men and women for ending patriarchy, for collective action globally and regionally. And, and uh, so much inspiration in all that, that creation of understanding of how patriarchal, patriarchy plays itself out and how it changes with time and its, its means and its objectives and, its, and, and how we can only resist it through collective action, break barriers, stand united. And so there was the, uh, the Peace Women Global effort, which connected us globally to the women's movement. Women's movement has to be alive globally, as somebody very rightly said, that it has, it, we are facing global crises. We are facing neoliberalism, which operates globally. We have to also then mobilize globally. And that's what we've been doing. But most important is, is connecting the women's movement in India to South Asia, those borders don't matter any. And especially nowadays, we haven't been, it's 11 years since I came to India, another about eight years or 10 years since we went to Bangladesh, our borders may be closed, but our hearts are not. And I think that was the message of Kamla that, that sustains itself and that will carry on sustaining our connectivity, our connectedness. Um, she, the other thing, you know, Kamla was, was institutional in the sense she dreamt of institution. So Sangat was a dream that got together with, with the combined effort of everybody. She led the way. Uh, Billion Women Rising is also institutionalized. It, it started with Eve Ansler, but it's now, it's global. And in South Asia, it matters. The fact that there are these billion women who are willing to raise the slogan of Azadi. And, uh, and that Azadi slogan also is fluid. If we change it and we adapt it to our own circumstances. So this, uh, this, the network will keep on. I mean, many of us will go eventually, but I think what the, the kind of spirit that it has been uh, put into it and the kind of, uh, of crossing the border, borders with love and affection and understanding that Kamla epitomized, I think will go on. And uh, she's admired in Pakistan. And very important in Sangat is the, is the reaching out to younger women. And those younger women from India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh coming together. I think that is the core of our movement to continue and I'm sure will continue. That I would like to again, thank everybody for, for this opportunity, this wonderful, inspiring uh, documentary. I must say, who did the scripting? It's beautifully scripted, and I would like to congratulate the persons who've done it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Kavar. And um, it's, it's really true. The empathy that one saw in Kamla and her understanding, deep understanding that patriarchy is at the root of inequality and injustice that we are seeing. And I think somewhere the very deep understanding also, um, especially in the Indian context, that these patriarchal forces, what they are most scared of is love, is coming together, is fraternity is the breaking of walls, whether it is walls of religion, of nationalities. And what Kamla really did throughout her life and continued to do that till the very end, she was attending meetings just a couple of um, hours before she finally went to hospital uh, where women from and men from across the borders from Pakistan from India from Bangladesh everywhere had come together and she consistently constantly brought people together and that is the force that is needed today in in our country and I think globally as well so thank you very much we are now going to uh, open um, for anyone who wants to, to say anything in, uh, in about two minutes, please raise your hands. Welcome 
any friends who want to say anything, uh, add anything, talk to us about Kamla, share your thoughts. Please raise your hands and let us know. You can indicate in the chat box if you would like to say something. We Bharat Bhaseen, please. Bharat Bhaseen ji, can you please unmute yourself? If you could please unmute yourself, uh, start your video. I'm uh, being the eldest brother of Kamala uh, from England. I'm very touched with what everybody has said. And I'm very grateful to you for remembering uh, Kamala in such fashion and manner. It is very touching to the family. And thank you very much, all of you. I love you all and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for those words, Bharatji. We, we all, the entire Kunba is missing Kamla. So we are all together to celebrate her, remember her, and celebrate her yes. together. Thank yes. you. Yes. God bless you all. God bless you all. Uh, Dr. Minakshi Gopinath. Thank you so much, Shabnam and Anjali, for giving us the opportunity to once again experience the spirit of Kamla, so palpable, so vibrant, so alive in our midst. I just wanted to share one anecdote which sticks in my mind, and that was a few years ago, Wiscomp had instituted an award for people who stand up against violence against women. And we conferred on Kamla the Shiro Award, and it was called the Sahas Award. And that's the Sahas that will keep us going. And I remember her being so delighted, almost childlike. And she would, you know, always uh, pull my leg and say, Guruji. And I would tell her, look, I'm your eternal shag shagit, never deserving of your indulgence. But meri taraf bhi kabhi rukke dekh liya kije. And she would give me a good little pat on, on the cheek and say, Jaja, kya bolti hai? <laughs> but I just want to say the childlike joy she had when she received the award. And it had a kind of a, a sort of a Buddhist touch and a revolutionary touch. And it was all this kind of combination of temperaments that she brought in her circle of love. She'll always be with us. And thank you, Shabnam and Anjali, for doing this for all of us. Thank you. MG and I remember being there for the Shiro Awards ceremony and it's true she was so delighted and she she really it meant a lot to her and she one could make out that she was she really wanted uh, to sort of you know talk about it even later and it it was really something that touched her and it is her circle of love and we are all of us here uh, expressing all the various ways in which she has touched our lives in, in the last many, many years and decades. Thank you so much. And uh, Rashmi Raj Biswal, if you could please unmute yourself. Rashmi. Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Mrs. Rashmi Biswal. I'm a principal in a Delhi school. I'm a DAV school principal. And uh, my uh, contact with Kamala Bistin, ma'am, was uh, by watching her in different programs and uh, being associated. The reason why I wanted to speak here is that once I sent her an email wanting to invite her to my school to be a guest in a gathering, and the reason why I wanted that was because I had an institution where I have about 150 female uh, teachers who uh, I 
uh, are affected some way or the other by the ideas and thoughts that Kamla ji actually ins you know, inspires people about. So I wanted her to be there and to talk to my, but somehow that never happened. She was somewhere in Nepal at that time. Then I met her in an NPSC conference. So I went up to her and I just told her that, uh, ma'am, I missed you, but I will not let you go by. I will certainly invite you to my school in the next gathering. So she says, I don't want to leave you. I want you to be back to me and to invite me. I think that the simplicity of this person and uh, the way she reached out is something that is to be emulated by many. And I look at it from that perspective that she is an inspiration, not only to me personally, but I wanted her to be an inspiration for my teachers also. And to many other women who out there are looking for this kind of a support and a, uh, you know, guidance which can lead them on. My respects to her deeply. I didn't know much about her family. Thanks to this movie, I'm aware of it now. And thanks for the opportunity for having uh, given me, uh, given to me to speak out here. Thank you so much, Anjali ji. Thank you. Thank you, Rashmi. And it's true that if we think, Kamla Shayad, she's one of the few people who connected so amazingly with people across generations you know i mean i've i've seen little children being mesmerized and so deeply affected by what she said and uh, you know it just cuts across those generations borders as we can see here so thank you so much uh, asha asha ramesh asha ji please unmute yourself Yeah, uh, thank you, Anjali, for this opportunity. Uh, well, there's so many things that one remembers about uh, Kamla Di because she is there inside us. And I think today's evening is really something which is so memorable and so inspiring. And she's always triggered something inside each one of us. And that's the trigger that she put in me also. For me, she was not just a Didi, but she was also a mentor. And I, I can never forget every time she would always give such, her house was an open house. And I still recall the days in um, the house in Bhagwan Das Road, when we were all part of a committee on the portrayal of women in media, which had been started. And we would go around, you know, blackening the posters of those days of those Malayalam films and other films, which we felt were delicately, of course, we can do nothing today because it's the invasion of the skies. But those days we did go around and there Kamla would come along and Chotu, you know, would be there in the pram. And not just that, Kamla's mother, she would come preparing alu puri ki sabzi and, you know, give it to all of us. And I still recall we would finish the blackening somewhere around and then find time go near the boat club, sit over there. We were not a very big group. And all of us would, you know, enjoy this lovely food. So her, 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 she was always so warm every time. And just, I think, uh, maybe a month or so before, when I heard that about her cancer, and I sort of sent her a message. Uh, I did not in ask her about what was, you know, uh, uh, that I got to know about this, but I just asked her, how are you? Is everything all well? And then she sent me a voice message. And that's when she told me exactly that happened to her and what the prognosis is. And, and then the last message, which is something I can never forget. Because again, I suddenly found, I received a packet from Sangat, which had all her little booklets because she knows that I do a lot of gender training. And I think she thought that this would really be useful. So English booklets, Hindi booklets, which I will never forget. And it's I will cherish till the end of my days, I'm sure. The last, I thanked you for that and the message that I got was that Asha ab mujhse main tumhe disappoint karne wali hu kyunki ab mujhse dard seh nahi ja raha hai and this was her last message which I can ever forget and after that one heard no more but she's there in our hearts she's alive in us and we will continue to keep that fire that she has given to us. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to request Gohar Raza. Uh, Gohar, if you can please unmute yourself, turn on your video. Um, please, if you could talk to us about the film, the making of the film, and anything that you would like to share about Kamla. Uh, as I remember Kamla, uh, I always thought that she is a completely shameless woman. And she could say and unhinge anybody when she was talking about feminism. We had called her to give a lecture in Dwarka. And the deep understanding that she had about impact of caste system on women came out so clearly, but so shamelessly that it completely took everybody was by surprise what she said. But it was true. She said that we are told that humans are born, certain humans are born from head of a devta. The others are born from the hands and then tummy and then legs. I know only one way or one process through which humans are born. And they come out of the womb of a woman, not men, etc. Everybody was taken by surprise, but nobody could disagree with her. The way she was putting arguments about the oppressive caste system itself showed that from a feminist perspective, how deep understanding she could convey in so beautifully articulated words. And therefore, this is just one incident that I am narrating. And therefore, for me, it was not very difficult to make this film, write this script, because her personality was so colorful that you could very easily make a film on her. I was very happy that she saw it. Shabnam told me I couldn't go when she saw the film. She cried at two places. When uh, Me Too was discussed in the film and uh, when the sun was discussed probably, if I remember correctly. But I was very happy that she liked the film. Someone has written a comment just now that make more films and a good wish that I should be making films. I do not want to make film on my friends in that kind of condition. I would better want somebody makes a film on me <laughs> when I die. Uh, but no, uh, it was in a sense a very difficult film to make because it was a very emotional film. And the period in which this film was made, uh, Kamla was going through hell and one could see that she is in pain and she is uh, worried about all kinds of issues that we are discussing even today uh, in this gathering. Therefore, for me, yes, it was easy because Kamla was a very colorful personality. And it was very difficult because she was a friend and she was in pain. And all of us knew that she is fading away. And when I was shooting this film, 
then a lot of friends got very angry with me. Some of them are here and said that, uh, no, we do not want to appear before the camera. I knew that if one has to make a film, there is no point in making film after Kamla is gone. The film should be made before she is gone. And the film should be shown to her so that she is happy about it or maybe reject it completely. I was very satisfied that finally it was done. And she saw it. Thank you. Thank you, Gohar. And thank you from all of us for putting in this massive effort, but bringing this beautiful film to us, which we will continue to cherish and, uh, and watch over and over again. And uh, I'm going to now request Preeti to please unmute herself. Preeti, if you could please switch on your camera, your video. Hello, thanks to the organizers for giving me the space to personally link with Kamla. Uh, like many of you, I have gone through a, a, a long training with her as a, a young professional who had just joined as a development activist in Kasoni. I had done this training. I was then working in Rajasthan. And then I, of course, went th through all her literature. I remember that, um, uh, uh, I, I, just give me a minute. I'll just put in my... Uh, Hello, hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello? we can hear you. We can hear you clearly. Please carry on, Preeti. Yes, sorry. Um, so, um, I, and uh, I remember one conversation, I, and, and then we kept meeting only um, uh, occasionally when she came to Rajasthan. Presently, I'm based in Ahmedabad, so I've never met her in Ahmedabad. But uh, I, I was at uh, uh, her friend, Jini Shivastav, and Om, um, uh, I, Jini, she is also a friend, and um, Omji's memorial lecture, uh, I think the, almost the first one was given by Kamala. And uh, we, in, with her humor and fun, she spoke of a patriarchy once again. And one of the comments we shared was that now there is so much of patriarchy and we've all tried ways to break it. The only way we can do it is probably if the genetic material changes. So it's, it's sometimes she comes up with these such humorous um, quirks that uh, really, I mean, it, 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 it is very, they are very, very revealing at the same time, very humorous. And the last I met her was at the All in, uh, Indian Association Women's Conference in Jan 2020. I had the good fortune of sitting by her side for some time, uh, and uh, we would sh we shared some of these some small and big talk. And um, he, at that time, also, she, it was the same Kamla who had met in the 1980s as a very young professional. <laughs> And uh, I, it, it was just amazing how she could be the same with the same spirit. And finally, I would like to say that the trainings with her were uh, those capsules where you could experience that if society really did away with patriarchy in every form, what it would be like living in such an atmosphere. So, she actually in her trainings produced that little uh, lab or a, a, a feeling of what society minus patriarchy would be. I thank Kamla, I thank all of you. Thanks for allowing me to speak, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And can I now request finally, um, uh, Professor Bulbul Dhar. Bulbul, if you could please unmute yourself. Bulbul Dhar. You'll need to unmute yourself, Bulbul. 
I'm so sorry. So uh, I thought it was so evocative. The film has been made beautifully. And one can recall, you know, uh, almost see Kamla Di through all those stages. But what, uh, you know, hasn't, uh, what's something which has stayed with a lot of us who are part of the OBR group has been her sense of a constant learning. And to me, that's been such a significant thing that she would, she would be ready to admit that I don't know and I to you know, from the younger people, come to our students and, you know, say, okay, tell me about this. And uh, at some point, there was this whole issue of LGBTQ plus plus and, you know, uh, you know, she was questioned on you're only looking at the binary and she said, no, it's, that's not true. And then she, she herself, you know, took a step back and said that, yes, maybe, you know, I need to know more. You guys tell me, you know, I'm old. And it was it, it was it, it it was just you know so uh, endearing her and it was very genuine. It wasn't as if she was doing it out of any any kind of you know defensive stance that she was taking. And this has been a constant that you know we look at even in terms of language. You know the flow in which she would move with so much of ease. Um, you know uh, deconstructing the terminology, Javik ling and samajik ling. You know that whole notion which was just so simple yet so clear. And uh, I think that reach, uh, something that Anjali also mentioned was across generations. It, it's absolutely, it was palpable how, how much of impact I know with my sister's NGO, Srijanatmak Manushi Sanstha, the reach of these little children, would they would look forward to, you know, when is she coming as if, you know, this was more than a heroine anywhere. And that was so sweet because that's when, you know, they imbibed a lot as well. So really, I think we need to disseminate the film. It's so beautifully been made, so beautifully narrated as well. And we need to disseminate it and probably, you know, um, uh, that would be something to celebrate her and the whole cause of feminism and, you know, her uh, whole cause of the power of love that she spoke about. So uh, thank you, thank you for this opportunity as well and beautifully made film, we are, you know, just so overwhelmed don't know what else, you know, to say on that quarter. So thank you. Thank you, Bulbul. That's true. You know, she, anytime one went for a, a course that uh, Kamla had taught earlier or, you know, at Sangat, uh, when she would be there with, this, with the participants and she would leave before uh, one went in, one had the task of not just talking about what one was there to talk about, but also first consoling the entire lot of young people who would be feeling this tremendous sense of loss and sorrow that Kamla had left the training. So, so we've all experienced that her, the love and the bond that she created with each of the people in, in the various trainings that she interacted with. Thanks, thank you, uh, Bulbul. Neeti uh, would like to speak. Neeti, can I please request you to unmute yourself? Uh, I, I think I'm unmuted. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, everyone has spoken so um, beautifully and evocatively that I really just want to echo what a lot of people have already said. Um, I met Kamna as Neeto's mother. When she used to come to visit her in Rishi Valley, so it goes back to the early 1990s. And um, of course, I knew she was a trailblazing feminist, but she, when she met us, she really met us as Mito's mother. So she was a, she was an, she was an aunt. She was a masi. She was a friend, and it was in that capacity that one often spoke to her that I continued to speak to her over the years and reach out to her. And yes, as she said, one spoke to her about things that one could not speak to with one's own mother. So she was really this maternal figure as well. That's, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Neeti, for, for joining us and uh, you know, what Kamla meant to you. And she was really special to so many of us in so many different ways. And uh, there was really no, there is really no one like Kamla's. 
so vibrant, so colorful, empathetic, so loving, compassionate, so vulnerable, and yet so strong. And uh, I think we all, Shabnam wants to say something. We'll, we'll end uh, today's meeting um, with a song by someone that she was very fond of, uh, Sonam Kalra, and a song that she was very fond of, Hum Dekhenge. But before that, Shabnam, over to you. I just wanted to acknowledge that, uh, you know, this film wouldn't have been possible without Rakesh and Dania, his team, and the uh, studio that was made available for us, and all the wonderful editors. Also, Dr. Saida Hamid, who translated the script and uh, all the subtitling was possible because when we showed it to Kamla, she wanted it subtitled. And Dr. Saida Hamid, very, you know, um, as always, she never says no to anything. She translated that. And Nazneen Sheikh, who was here, I don't know if she's still here, at one day's notice, she sung that beautiful song which we have played at the end, Abhito Me Jawan. Just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Shabnam. That this film is so precious and so happy to be part of the screening of this film. Um, I'm going to now request Amrita to please play Hum Dekhenge by Sonam Kalra. Stretches its arms towards perfection. Rui ki tara ud jayenge, hum mehkumo ke paon tale. Hum mehkumo ke paon tale. Ye dharti. Clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit. Ye dharti dhar 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 ke gi 
और अहले हकम के सरू पर जब बिजली कड़ 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 के ही हम देखेंगे Where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action lazim hai ke hum bhi dekhenge hum dekhenge into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake hum dekhe transported me back to central park in uh in delhi and where kamla would sit is this fantastic obr event on the 14th of february year after year and sonam sang this song at one of the obr events there and it was beautiful it's one of the most favorite songs of kamla's so thank you very much with that we are going to bring this screening to a close uh, on behalf of anhad obr india sns thank you very much for joining us this evening and celebrating kamla thank you don't delete it i'll listen to it ha huh? don't delete it it's not recorded oh acha so it was coming live dear bhai is shuru kiya tha so the recording of today's entire program is available on facebook on the anhad facebook page i'm also sharing a link in the chat and the film is available on anhad india's youtube channel that link is also shared how many Meera ji, you'd like to say something? There's no sound, Meera. Can't hear you. Mira your sound is not connected